guys! Today I'll be turning this plain metal livestock trough into a beautiful summer pond. I'm the kind of person who's really happy to receive a livestock trough for her birthday. For real, I asked for this. I have a vision. My last attempt at a summer pond was highly fancy. But I've since moved and I don't have the fancy pond anymore. It's not fair, buddy. But on the bright side, I think I can take this cow trough and make it fancy. I think I can be fancy in spirit. I want a little fish pond. I want to be summer tubbin like all the other cool fish keepers. There's a gas station nearby that sells agricultural equipment, like water troughs. Can you imagine Taylor with this? This will make a really nice little fish pond for my yard. It would be highly unlike me to not fancy it up just a little bit. I actually like the metal look on the outside. I'm not gonna be changing how it looks on the outside. I'll be changing how it looks on the inside. What do you mean, Taylor? What are you gonna do on the inside? You'll see, I have big ideas. Soap, rag, bucket. Uh, now I'll scrub it down. So the reason why I'm using hot water and soap is just to clean the metal and to get the grease off. Galvanized metal has a layer of oil on it. And for what I'm going to do to the inside is really cool and that oil can't be on. I can't have oil messing with the adhesion of what I'm doing to the inside of my pond. I do not need yoga today, that's for sure. Ooh, that was a good workout. For good measure, I think I'll repeat that process. I'm not out of the cleaning stage yet. Just to be extra sure I got all the oil out, I'm gonna be just swiping some acetone over the surface. This stuff's nasty, I keep it outside. Wow, it's getting a lot off. Whew, it's actually really fumy in there thanks to all that acetone. I'm not even embarrassed about this. Not embarrassed. Using the acetone really helped clean up the metal. Like, look, look at all that stuff I got off. Back in the mask, why? Because I forgot to uh, sandpaper the inside as per the instructions of the stuff I'm gonna use. I've been using my respirator a lot lately. It's been a great investment. It was just like 40 bucks. I've been using it during spray painting, during like sanding wood where there's dust everywhere and it's just been really, really nice. I'm gonna put some painter's tape on this nice little rim on the edge because I don't want to get any of my paint that I'm using on the rim. Let's just keep it nice and clean. Wow, more yoga today. Okay, now we're moving on to the next step. In my case, it's putting a special primer called self-etching primer that's made specifically for metals and works for galvanized metal. This primer, I'm just gonna put it on like any other paint primer and, and coat the inside. Easy. I'm about to start the final step and the product that I'll be using to make the inside of this livestock stock tank pretty is this. This is Pond Shield. It's a two-part epoxy paint that a lot of pond enthusiasts use as like the coating for their, for their pond. But people also use this in like fountains and pools and all kinds of non-toxic underwater applications. I have some pond shield in a lovely um, Delta Blue, it's called. And that's what I'll be applying tonight. I am totally ready to go. I have my cups here for measuring out the epoxy. I have um, 
isopropyl alcohol for thinning the epoxy, and I have all my measurements ready to go. I have the paintbrush I'll be using. I have some gloves. I have my mixing sticks. I am just ready to go as soon as that sun goes down just a little bit more and it cools just a little more. Okay guys, I have my epoxy stuff. I have my pre-measured part A, my part B. I have my thinner and now I'm gonna mix it all together and that's when the countdown starts. I only have like maybe 20 or 30 minutes of working time. So here I go. This stuff is going on a lot easier than I expected. It's like a really just thick paint that you have a countdown timer on. I ended up making one more tiny batch because the bottom of this tank isn't fully coated and I am just gonna pour this and get a nice smooth bottom. I didn't film much of that in detail because I had to work so fast. I didn't want to like be monkeying with a camera while I was working with epoxy paint. But check it out. It looks pretty nice on the inside. I can tell that probably tomorrow I'll have to go look really closely and inspect and just make sure I didn't miss any spots or some spots aren't too thin, that sort of thing. But I'm pretty hopeful about this and I think it looks really nice. This stuff is water safe after 24 hours. Um, but it can be recoded sooner than that, so I'm gonna let it set up and maybe come check it out tomorrow when it's light. I'm excited. Good morning. What do you say we check on the pond? So I covered it with a blanket last night so um, leaves and junk wouldn't get in. Wow, look, I love this. Oh, a little caterpillar fell in. Oh, I'll save you. I sort of think that this turned out really beautifully. Ugh. See, it's hard to the touch. It's nice and smooth. It still has to cure for about 12 hours until it's safe for water. I'm looking around. I see a couple spots that maybe need a tiny, tiny bit extra coating. So I'll probably do that today. I'll just put on one final coat in some of these places where it seems a little bit thin. But I love this. I love the color. This is Delta Blue, by the way, Delta Blue. Oh man. Epoxy can be tricky to work with if you don't have, you know, if, you, if you're not perfect, if you're not perfect. And I obviously got it right. I obviously mixed it in the correct, correct ratio, but there's just a couple tiny little like bubbles that are a little bit soft. And that probably means maybe it wasn't perfectly mixed, like I didn't mix it for long enough, or maybe like I didn't scrape the sides of the container well enough for the perfect mixture and I'm just seeing some little sticky soft spots. So on these tiny little soft spots, I'm just gonna scrape them off um, and sand the area and I'm gonna go in with my final coat and fix it. There's a little sticky spot, bye bye. If you have epoxy problems like this, it's fixable. You just have to scrape that off and go over it with more epoxy. I'm gonna go mix some more up. <laughs> okay, I'm back. I mixed it oh so very thoroughly. And now I'm, I'm gonna move fast because the clock is ticking. Done, I really hope that works out because I don't have any more epoxy left. I pretty much used it all. So no more mistakes, Taylor. <laughs> Quick note, it's probably not the best idea to do this kind of stuff on a windy day. I kept getting things blowing into my epoxy and having to pick it out, which was annoying, but that's what I get for doing it on a windy day. So I have the tank covered with a blankie and now I just have to wait 24 hours. I think it's time to go shopping. Let's go to my local pond store. I made my way to my local pond store, which has a really nice selection. We have like a big pond back here to choose from. There's all kinds of stuff inside. There's all kinds of cool water features here. It's really pretty. Look at all the plants in the back of my car. I have some beautiful aquatic plants just sitting here ready to go into the pond. The pond is going to take a while to fully cure, so I'm not going to be able to put my plants in until maybe tomorrow evening. So I'll be back tomorrow. Ready to see if it worked? 
Whoosh. I'd say so. Ooh, there's no soft spots on this one. <laughs> That's good, I did it right the second time. I think the next thing to do is to fill it up with water. My pond is filled up like two thirds of the way and I figured it was time to talk about some of the plants that I got and I'm gonna put them in my pond. And I'm just gonna spend a moment tinkering with some arrangements um, and putting cinder blocks in and just playing around with it a little bit. This lovely plant here, it gets kind of tall, so I'm gonna try putting it in the back. It's called lavender musk. I just thought it'd be kind of cool to try. Miniature spearwort is a lovely flowering plant that gives little yellow flowers. Water forget-me-nots, which are a little tiny blue flowering plant. It's the um, Alaska state flower, so I knew I had to get it. And this one is called blue-eyed grass, another flowering plant. Everything that I have in here, hopefully, will flower for me. I think that this is looking pretty great. I forgot to mention I also got a beautiful little red lily that's in the bottom right now, and some dwarf water lettuce. Of course, I think I did it. I think I actually finished my beautiful little pond. Hi, Leo. What do you think? Don't you dare eat my plants. I'm hoping that this pretty miniature spearwort bushes up to get a lot of little tiny yellow flowers. This whole corner here is forget-me-nots. I only bought one pot, but it was so full and scraggly. Um, I went ahead and I separated it out into three pots and I'm hoping that just gets nice and bushy right there. I think it looks pretty great. Now I have to get a sponge filter going. I'm gonna get this pond nice and cycled because fish are going to go in it. What kind of fish, you ask? Well, that's gonna be a surprise. <laughs> I've got my sponge filter, my airline, my air pump, and an extension cord. Okay, my sponge filter is set up. Just like with every single other tank of mine when I just start it, I seed it with bacteria. When I'm starting fresh, I always use Florin Bacter from Brightwell Aquatics. They're my sponsor, they're awesome. I use their products just all the time. My t I dose my tanks with this bacteria, with the Florin Bacter, and with the bacteria food, Fast Start. This makes sure there's enough nutrients in the water to actually get all of your strains of bacteria going. Boop, boop. Now I just get to sit back and appreciate my plants for a little while and watch them grow and hopefully watch them perk up. Soon this pond will be ready for fish and I'm going to put some fish in that you might not guess. Try guessing down below what kind of fish you think I'm going to put in here. Guess. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you thought this project was fun. I hope that you also think it looks pretty with that blue in there. When the sun hits, oh man, I think this is going to be gorgeous. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks to all my patrons. I really appreciate you guys. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.